Hello, Kingdom citizens. Welcome to Login 2.0. My name is Denzel Rodriguez, and today we are going to crack open a series of videos that you and I are going to go through together. We're going to learn together. We're going to grow. What we're going to be covering is the kingdom, a king, and an account for the king's people and how this applies to us, us kingdom citizens living in a kingdom, trying to accelerate, enhance, grow our relationship with Christ so that we may receive exactly what it is that his will is for our individual lives. So we can come together and cultivate and build something that will last forever. So the very first thing that I want to start to present to you is understanding your credit in the kingdom and what that really means. In order for you to really get this, you have to understand where you are currently at in your life. And you also need to understand the system that you currently live under. So the ultimate goal, once you become a kingdom citizen, once you become a part of God's kingdom, really the goal for you is to seek the kingdom all through your life and all righteousness shall be added unto you. That is the ultimate goal, is to seek the kingdom, the characteristics of the king, the ways of being, how to operate as a king, how to function as a king, how to live your life as a king. In order for you to do that, you must understand kingdoms. You have to learn and study kingdoms. And you also need to learn and understand the current system or kingdom that you currently live under. So we're gonna, we're gonna divide two kingdoms here. I'm currently in the United States. For, the, for those who are watching you know, outside of the United States, this will apply to you. You can just take the same data and apply it to your country. So we're gonna be covering the United States the current system that we all live under here in the US and how one can begin to make certain moves and steps to move over to the kingdom of heaven okay the kingdom of heaven is a place an invisible kingdom the kingdom of god is an influence on you your physical body it's an influence on your spiritual self on your mind, your thoughts, your actions, right? And once you get the kingdom of God going through you, you can't but help seek the kingdom of heaven, that invisible place, that, that awesome land. And your job as a sub-king to the king of kings is to bring the influence, to bring the characteristics of the king into the physical world. That is the king's goal. So as you being a kingdom ambassador, a sub-king, your, your objective is to expand, colonize the kingdom here on earth. Bring the invisible to the visible. How do we do that? Let's crack it open. Let's take a look at the board. So living in the U.S., one of the most critical things that an individual must do is understand the financial system that you currently live under, okay? And this is a critical component in the kingdom of heaven as well. God calls it management, or an economist, I should say, is really the measuring stick that God uses to identify a kingdom citizen's trust and faith in the system is based off the management of that person. How does that person manage the resources that the king gave to its people and how did they economize those resources? To economize simply means to maximize on the minimum, okay? All right, eco, right? You wanna be efficient, eco, and then omize, you wanna maximize the resources, the tools that you have been given 
properly managing it so that you can what? Give, right? A major characteristic of a king is giving. Glory, that's one of the big things, is being able to reveal, right, in the, in the physical, glory, showing what the kingdom looks like, and then ownership, real estate, land, business, right? A church, an organization, a nonprofit, a home, a household, children, husband, wife, family, friends, right? Confidants, acquaintances. That's ownership, okay? So the more we understand how God's system works, we can implement it over here in the U.S., rise above the system so that you can truly be a kingdom citizen and live like the king wants you to live because the king has your best interests in mind, all right? So let's take a look. Living in the U.S., we've got these three systems in regards to credit. When we say credit, I want you to think of the same terminology as management, trust, right? Worthiness, very similar here in the U.S. to determine an individual's, I should say, position in the economy that you live in, the U.S. government looks at this, your credit. And there's three institutions that put together a credit score, an evaluation on the individual to see how does that person manage and economize the U.S. economy? How can I trust them? So here it is, the measuring stick in the United States in terms of your finances and how you develop and how you do things based off your credit. So credit is a powerful resource, a powerful tool that an individual can use to build their kingdom. Effectively, efficiently, maximizing tools and resources so that you can what? Be a cheerful giver, have glory and ownership, okay? And ultimately fulfilling your purpose, your desire, the will that God has for your life, all right? So those three institutions are Equifax, Experian, and TransUnion. These are the three big dogs, the three kings, okay, that determine your overall credit score. Some of the big factors, there's about five to six major factors that compose of a credit score. Just want to go over the three big ones. DTI is your debt to income ratio. How much debt? does the individual have in the economy compared to the income, the inflow, money coming into a household versus debt on top of that household? What's that debt to income ratio? Okay, the next part is utilization, right? So we got debt to income ratio. If someone has a lot of debt and low income, okay, you're already not so much of a good what? Manager, you're not economizing, you're probably not giving a lot, you probably don't have a lot of glory, and you probably don't have a lot of ownership. Okay, do you see the comparison? You see what's happening? Okay, utilization is another key component to developing an awesome credit score so that you can show your credit worthiness here in the US, all right? Utilization is simply based off the use of your credit. How does a person use their revolving credit lines? And I'm going to explain what, you know, revolving credit line is a little bit later. But debt to income ratio is usually based off loans, right? Student loans, car loans, mortgages, personal loans, anything with loan, boom, DTI. Utilization is all of your revolving, your credit cards, HELOC, line of credit, okay? Stuff that is that goes in and out consistently, it, it gets used the most, okay? And then the payment history, this is the biggest one out of the three, 
is payment history. How does the individual pay their bills? Do they pay it on time? Do they pay it late? Do they kind of pay it, pay it half? Are they late sometimes? Are they genuinely, generally on time, but maybe they have one or two late payments? This is super critical, all right? Very similar in the kingdom of heaven. When a person gives to the king, how often are they doing that? Every year? Uh, do they take a break one year and pick it up the next year? Do they forget to give? Are they not accountable with their resources? Right? What could happen in the kingdom? Right? Think about what happens in your life when you don't give. Right? When you don't give to the king. When you don't give to the church. When you don't tithe. When you don't give to a nonprofit, give to an organization, give to your family, give to your friends, when you don't help, let's just say, in general, what do you think happens? There, there's a cutoff point. There is a chance that you're going to miss opportunities that can come your way because you forgot to give, right? You forgot to help or you simply ignored it, very similar to your day-to-day -day bills, right? If you don't pay the light bill on time, what happens? The light shuts off. If you don't pay gas on time, what happens? You ain't got no hot water, okay? If you don't pay your car payment, right, you ignore it, what happens? You get repossessed, right? They, they capture that car. They repossess it into their possession, because the institution has deemed you unworthy of that resource. Same exact thing happens in the kingdom. When you don't give to God, when you don't give to the king, he says, oh man, Denzel hasn't paid his, uh, his light bill. Denzel's not keeping up track on his mortgage payments. Uh, he's not paying his student loans. This guy is just not paying anybody. He is unworthy of my resources, so therefore I'm going to fire him as a manager, and I'm going to take his resources and put it in someone else's hand who can manage my kingdom, right? Because God owns everything in the kingdom, okay? When there's a king, a king owns everything in the kingdom, owns all the people, all the land, all the animals, owns it all. So here you have this almighty God, that is taking claim over everything. And then you as a king, a sub-king, to the king of kings, are simply a manager, stewarding, managing the resources, economizing, making more than what the king already started with, right? And all the king asks is for you to give back 10% of what you produce. So you keep 90, the king keeps 10. The king originally owns 100% of it all, but he's only asking you to give 10, okay? Works very similar in the U.S. economy. You have taxes to pay to the government, right? And you have interest to pay to the individual institutions that you borrow money from, right? And they say, give me 5%, give me 10%. Sometimes institutions ask for way more than 10%. They say 15, 21%, right? Like on a credit card. So they're charging way more than the king does, right? Okay. And you, when you don't do that, when you don't pay, what happens? In the U.S. economy, you become unworthy, your credit score drops, your DTI increases, your utilization increases, your payment history looks poor, and then things start to get removed from you little by little. So we must understand how kingdom works. We have to understand how the U.S. economy, the governmental system works with these three um, institutions, Equifax, Experian, TransUnion, how they calculate our credit worthiness so that we can attain, obtain things and resources so we can make more out of it, okay? So now moving on 
to the tools, resources here in the U.S., right, that charge certain interest rates, and I want to put some, I wanted to lay out some numbers here so you, as a citizen in the U U.S., can understand, okay, what would be a high cost, low cost of borrowing to obtain resources that I can manage, economize, give, uh, obtain glory and ownership here in the physical world. How do I do that? All right. So when you're first starting off in life, if you're someone around my age, say 24 and under, you know, you can start building credit personally at the age of 18, I believe. You can actually start building your credit before that by simply having a parent or guardian add you to their credit history, their credit track record by means of an authorized user. So you can pretty much piggyback on a previous king in your family or household so that you can maximize your life, right? By simply stepping on the shoulders of giants, right, of successful people that have successfully built kingdoms, right? Hopefully, you've got a king in your family. Hopefully. If you don't, it's okay. You are a king by birthright, okay? Now it is just up to you to become the king that you ought to be. And the only way you become a king is through blood, right? So it's birthright. And you need blood, right? You need the blood of the king. Well, who's the king? Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ died on the cross. He gave his blood to us so that we don't have to go through all the other things that people went through back in the day. And we don't have to go to hell because of our iniquities and our transgressions. He took over all of that he took over that, uh, that decision, right? He took it upon himself of all the evil, and he gives us grace, righteousness, glory, ownership, management, right? Eternal life so that we can, you know, maximize our purpose here on earth and then eventually come back to the king and live with him in eternity, okay? So coming back to here, 18 or less, you can start building credit by simply um, having your parent or guardian get involved in it all. As soon as you become an adult, the very first thing that an individual can do in the U.S., let's say you get a job, right? You get your first job, you start making money. The very first thing that you can do with that paycheck, depending on how much you get, is simply do a 70-30 split, okay? Where you take 30%, you put it off to the side. The other 70%, you can live on. With this 70%, you could easily obtain credit in your name in a very short period of time. You can approach banks, institutions using both the 70% that you're going to live on and the 30% that you saved off to the side for taxes, for giving, giving to the king, 10% taxes for the U.S. economy, right? You have to pay the U.S. economy, because that's what you currently live under. So you got to pay them, because that's a kingdom. You live in the kingdom of the United States, they require a tax. So you got to pay them. God also has a kingdom, so you got to pay him tax, 10%. And the other 10%, you pay yourself, right? Saving, investing, building, so that you can eventually obtain so much wealth that you don't have to work for your whole life. You get to choose where, when, how much you want to work, right? You want to get the principle down of management in a kingdom when it comes to finances. You want to get that principle down first. If you get that down, my friend, you're going to do very well in life, okay? So 70-30 split. Now, here's what's interesting. That 10%, instead of storing it in a savings account where it ain't going to do nothing, for you. It's not going to earn too much cash, right? You could essentially take a portion of your income and get secured credit. OK, 
okay, you can start getting secured credit to start building your overall credit score so that you can receive a nice credit score so that one day when you need tools, say a car, a mortgage, credit cards, a personal loan, right, student loans, you can get very good interest rates, not high interest rates, you can get very good, decent interest rates so that you can pay off that debt in a very, very uh, fast amount of time, okay? So here's the first step. You want to look this up, secured credit. You want to look up what that is. You can start with a secured credit card. You can start with a secured line of credit at a bank or an institution to start building credit. And a very simple thing that you can do is use secured credit to pay for some of your living expenses, say food, gas, phone bill, miscellaneous stuff, um, anything that can be paid with what's called a credit card, right, could be used to run your expenses to start building credit so I can start looking pretty to the U.S. so that when I get older and I want to acquire things, I can borrow at very, very low or zero cost, and we'll go over that. We're gonna crack open this even more in other videos. I just wanna give you the basics right now of understanding your credit in the kingdom, rising above the system so you can live in the kingdom of heaven where financial delays won't stop you from understanding who your king is in heaven, who you actually serve, who you ought to serve, okay? Now, let's go over these numbers right here, okay? I was doing some research. We're in 2020, February, okay? And I was just doing some simple research, getting the average interest rates on particular tools that most people will acquire in their life, okay? And so if you're an individual that doesn't have the capital, enough capital saved up just yet, right? What could an individual do? They can do something called borrowing, okay? You can borrow, right? If I, if I go to the kingdom of God, right? And I say, Lord, I need something. Um, I want to... You know, I've got this plan. I want to do X, Y, and Z. I want to, I want to build a church. Um, I need land. Okay. I've been, I've been saving 10% of my income. Uh, I've been tithing 10%. Um, you know, I'm paying my taxes to the U.S. economy. I've got the principal foundation down. I want to expedite the process a little bit here. Okay. I want to use my good credit here in the U.S., right? But I also want to ask you, Lord, for some help to, to get me access to some resources or give me wisdom so that I may obtain a resource at a very low cost, pay it off in a relatively very short period of time so I can save money on interest, increase cash flow, pay off debt, be a good steward, Create assets, build wealth, okay? So, so here you are, you know, you're praying, you're, you're creating a plan with God, you're negotiating with the U.S. economy in terms of finding particular deals, right? This is very interesting stuff. Very interesting way of looking at a kingdom, okay? Very interesting way of how you are currently living versus how you could be living under the kingdom, right? So instead of you being a lazy Christian, and always praying, 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 praying for something to happen, which God already did in your life. You just have to claim it. What I'm going to start getting you to start thinking on is how can I manage, right, the little that God did give me? How can I economize the little that God did give me so that he can, what, trust me? Remember how I said the primary measuring stick that God uses for his people is management, right? The management of resources to become fruitful and multiply on earth and expand the kingdom. How well are you doing that? Based on how well you're doing that, 
God's going to bless you and give you much more than you can even imagine, than you can even handle, okay? This is factual stuff. This is a universal fact. This is a kingdom fact. These are principles. You cannot violate these principles, okay? So once we understand that, now let's take a look at the U.S. economy in terms of the interest rates, the average interest rates based off a relatively good credit score. And then if you currently have debt, car loans, mortgages, student loans, the whole nine, whatever it is, and you see that your interest rates are significantly higher than the ones that I display, then you can evaluate where you're at, how you've been managing your resources. And you can say, oh, wow, I didn't even know that that was possible, that I could get that low of a rate. Let me work on my score and then I can renegotiate new terms as I progress, as I build that score. So the first one is car loan, right? The average car loan in the US, about 5%. This is based, these are based off credit scores of, I wanna say 700 or higher, right? A 700 score or higher. The lowest score, I believe, I've never seen it in my life, but I, I think it's like as low as 300. And the high is a, is a 850. Okay, so that's like the range. I, I'm not sure if it goes lower than 300. You don't want to be low. You don't want to be anywhere in this ballpark, let me tell you. Okay, that's a terrible place to be. That means you are a poor, poor steward manager. Right? God has already fired you at that point, financially, if you're there. Okay? So the only way to rise above it is to start understanding how a kingdom works so that you can rise above the system so you can get the things that you want and the desires and the wills and the purpose okay so but i want to say 700 plus or higher credit score from the three bureaus your overall score 700 or higher you're going to get these uh interest rates really no matter where you are in the u.s okay so <clears throat> if you have a car loan five percent if you have a car financed new or used, and it's less than 5%, the interest rate, you probably have a really good credit score. If it's above that, if it's higher, like double, like 10, 15, 18%, you probably have very, very poor credit. And by having poor credit, poor trust with the U.S., that can cost you so much cheddar, so much. And that can hinder you from doing what? giving, getting glory, and having ownership, right? How can you give to God if you ain't got no cash? Because everything's going to interest. And then on top of that, then you got to pay tax to the U.S. government every single year. Now, this is required. This is not, okay? You have to make yourself accountable. This is why it's very difficult for a lot of people to give sometimes. Because they're not accountable for what they give. They don't even track what they give. Most people don't. This is something that I had to work on myself. I'm like, man, you know, here's, here's this, this almighty book, this Bible. It's telling me I got to give and I got to tithe. I got to do it. If I'm going to become a great manager, if I'm going to become a great economist and have glory and ownership and be able to give cheerfully, I got to give. I got to tithe, period. There's no, that's it, you got to give. And so when you don't do that, guess what? Now you're cutting off heaven from reaching you to bless you with more because you're clouded with the tax from the U.S. Plus, since you have poor credit, now you're even more clouded with high interest rates. They're killing you. They're ripping you apart. All right? So car loan, 5% or less, you got probably got good credit, 5% or higher, hey, might want to Take a look. So same thing down the line. Mortgage, mortgages, uh, 20, 24% or lower are, is, you know, is a good rate to get. A credit card interest rate, 21% or less is good. I mean, I've seen them as low as like 8, 6, 10, 5. They're, they're awesome. They get really, really good the higher the score. Okay, if you're above 21, you probably got like a 650 or something like that. Okay, HELOC, 6% or lower is, is a good term is a good rate on a home equity line of credit personal loan six percent or lower 
personal line of credit, 10% or lower. There's a bunch of other banking products out there. I just kind of wanted to go over the main, the juicy stuff, the common stuff that people often get, okay? So we're going to stop right here, okay? I know this was a nice, decent size video, um, and I hope you got really, really good data from this. Watch this video five times over, okay? You have to understand the king, the kingdom, and the account for its people, right? When, when Jesus comes to take an account, he wants to know, how have you been managing his resources? Understand your credit in the kingdom, and I'm telling you, you're getting that much closer to being financially free, right, from systems and having your full attention, your full service to the king. My name is Denzel Rodriguez. Have a wonderful day. God bless.